Alright, what's up inbreds and librarians? Since we're talking about some wholesome family-friendly domestic violence, I thought Fortnite gameplay would be the most fitting. And you can call me Austin Jones, the way I was slapping my dick across these kids' foreheads. This is a gameplay I'm sure EDP would even get a boner to because I was just ripping these kids a new asshole. So make sure to watch all the way through because I caught a fat dub ski and got registered onto the sex offender list by the end of it. So yeah, it's a real hoot that I'll make you too. So make sure to kick your brother and smack your mother and slap a like on this video for your dad slaps you. And yeah, let's stop poking around the clit and get right into this shit. Damn, ain't your squad full of pedos. Niggas be bitches, they rock and stilettos. Southern is black and I can't with the metal. Up with a chopper, leave a Oh, oh, shit, cook. God damn, oh, shit, soda, cook. Hey, cook, we got the goddamn. All right, welcome back, ladies and ladies with dicks. I've said this a countless amount of times, but I absolutely despise family channels. I would honestly rather be a member of the Chris Benoit family than to be part of a family vlogging creator. Forcing your kid to be happy in front of a camera all the time than locking him in your basement right after you hit the record button is absolutely disgusting. For example, if a kid didn't laugh, you know, having a little chuckle until he got a wet spot in his buckle the whole entire video, then his family will probably just lock him up and use Chinese water torture to force the fucking laughter out of him. It's absolutely disgusting on what they do. And hey, how the kids are used as a form of, like, coochie currency or cervix coins, if you will. Like, they're practically just used to profit for their own parents. And knowing Austin, I wouldn't be surprised if every time he found out that Catherine was pregnant, he just started caressing tax papers on her stomach so the kid pops out the sauce's wallet as the next step in Winkleman. If I found out I was gonna be part of a family vlogging channel, my mother's cervix cave would be my sudden grave because I would high-five the clit and hang myself in the umbilical cord because I ain't dealing with that shit. Oh my god! There's barely actually any love in the family. It's all money-oriented. Their whole entire family tree is just a Mary Kay pyramid scheme. It's like almost watching a fucking Animal Planet documentary. They won't even record everything being sunshine, dilly-daddle, tinsel, glitty, holly jolly, Santa titty, rainbows, because they'll literally go out of their way to record the worst detrimental, saddening life experiences of their kid's childhood, and their first thought is, well, my kid is crying. I don't know what else to do, but Jack Drive power bomb that little bitch-ass sperm worm into the family coffee table, so you know what? Let's try to profit off that. Majority of the families just read their child's adoption papers as a good bedtime story to scare them into having a good fucking morning tomorrow when they do a slime challenge at their grandmother's funeral. Or they might even do a little Sunday surprise where they take their kids to the grandfather's nursing home and diamond test his kidney stones in the back of the fucking nurse's office. Or the classic fan favorite, pranking pedophiles by dousing my kid in bear maze. Gone wrong at 3 a.m., Chris Hansen sued me. I fucked him to show him what a real man is. I mean, shit, I would take a seat to watch that. Hey, don't forget me, homeboy. I want to watch that shit, too. I'm not still going to jail, right? <laughs> I'm sure that'll be a video that'll make Dan Schneider take off his shoes and let out a little heat and who. Yes, I mean, the list can just fucking go on about shitty content for family channels. I absolutely hate them with a burning passion. The way they use their kid as diaper shitting pawns and basically have Austin play chess across Catherine's breast to produce another one is just absolutely disgusting. Competing in a Nintendo tournament is more rewarding than watching a family channel. All they give you for the prize pool is a $5 Dollar Tree gift card and a crusty cum sock that one of the developers used when he was fucking 12. They suck. I mean, they suck more than Riley Reed at a Christmas party. And slap a cripple and kiss my left nipple. I didn't even got to the eye-captivating thumbnails and titles that they use. Pretty much every fucking video, which makes me wish I was blind, which is either them announcing that they're having another house slave that'll pop out of their vagina in nine months, or for a real bang for your buck even though nobody gives a flying fuck, it's them having their kid react to their divorce papers and then they'll instantly just get remarried two weeks later. I mean, you can't be surprised if your kid becomes the next Charles Manson and starts running around the house with a shotgun like a fucking Republican Usain Bolt, and I'll be a lifeguard and go down to the bottom of the gene pool with the worst family channel on the fucking internet right next to Ace Family, which is the Prince Family. But there's nothing noble or royal about this family whatsoever, as you can judge right from the first thumbnail alone, it looks like her daughter contracted the T-Virus from Resident Evil, and she may only have two weeks to live, but who gives a flying clit shit less? Look at that 2022 TRX, $200,000 surprising Damien, look at him smiling, everything's peachy, everything's golden, we love our family. Our daughter's on life support. The big double chin grins from this thumbnail that kind of looks like the smiling family from Insidious really just makes me want to flop my dick and give this video a click in utter fear. Now this one, I feel like the next Bryant Johnson looking at, I'm almost looking out my window to make sure I don't see any sirens coming. What a captivating and empowering thumbnail. He went from a certified flex offender to a certified sex offender. Now, I'm no super sleuth here, but something is tickling my sack to find out the truth. I feel like this guy is working for secret services and just like a little test by the FBI to see how many people they can speed run onto their kitty titty list. I'm almost pleading the fifth after looking at this thumbnail. Here we have a nice, honoring, respectable woman giving her little coochie curtains a little fucking five pounder flounder. With the husband on the far right making a face I can only describe as him watching his dog take a shit on the carpet. And with the caption, ooh, let me see, really just adds to the flavor of the tuna tunnel that she's five thunder and plundering down there. Almost resembles a little kid taking a family photo, him wanting to see the picture after. It's fucking, we're having a wonderful time here, aren't we? My eyes are starting to water, not from the photo itself, but from her giving her hamburger a little helper. I can almost smell that cooch from a flag football field and 10 miles away. <coughs> <coughs> 
See, I'm almost choking from the fucking goo. Shit probably smells like a sweaty porn shoot, cock and sky max socks. Absolutely disgusting. I can't believe this is content on YouTube now. This is what gets deemed monetized and pushed out to the recommendations. Just so a bunch of horny 12 year olds can watch this and start humping their pillow like a fucking dog. It's absolutely disgusting. And speaking of disgusting, besides blue cheese and watching a 10 hour compilation of Sarah J, family channels are also disgusting. They're practically just one big septic take, and the Ace family is the biggest piece of shit that's floating in there. Now, they're no strangers to controversy. They've been in drama up, down, left, right from the world and back in the back of the moose ass crack. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware child abuse. But for all the eight-year-olds and fathers that suffer from alcoholism that watch family channels to take notes, Austin from the Ace family did something horrible, something worse than I couldn't even imagine. I thought the worst thing about him was his pullout game, but recently he's being sued with a small, inconvenient fee of $100 million. And he has not one, not two. Matter of fact, the court hit him with a knee of justice and said, fuck you, because he actually has 12 lawsuits put to his name, which I don't even know what's possible. It's almost like he's trying to speedrun and get a life sentence. If you took a look at his lawsuit, you would think I ripped a page right out of the fucking Bible. It's almost like he's trying to have a court off with Larry Nash are if you walk into a McDonald's play place. But the answer to how Austin practically got one of the Elder Scrolls worth of lawsuits that the Supreme Court taped to a brick and threw through his fucking window was actually quite simple and also easily avoidable. But he doesn't know when to stop or have any control. It's almost like a boosie walking to a gay bar. He would go absolutely ape shit. and Austin did the exact same thing by hosting an influencer boxing event where basically a bunch of YouTubers and TikTokers would slap their chose together like thunder sticks at a hockey game to compete who has the smallest penis. It was called Social Gloves, which the name alone you can almost vision motherfuckers hitting the renegade over court Corpses, but none of them knew how to fight. It was almost like watching two drunk inbreds at a family reunion arguing who fucked their cousin first. But regardless of it, that show was huge, and Austin's dick was even huger, and everybody went home with their balls blue and face black, happy to throw some fists in the name of pay-for-view entertainment. Is the exact fucking opposite of what happened. Because apparently Austin was acting like this event was gonna have the whole world start jerking and twerking and excitement. People were gonna call off work, airplane travel would stop, parents would get back together with their kids just to watch this event, and then emotionally abuse their children with a camera in front of their face because of the inspiration they got from watching Austin caress a few nipples out in the boxing ring. I mean, he was thinking this shit was gonna blow the Tour de France out the fucking water and make a run for its money, even though Austin's money is the only thing that's run away from him right now. Might as well have his wallet compete no, in the next no, fucking no, Olympics. But he estimated that he would sell 500,000 pay-per-view subscriptions to watch this event, in which he came just short, a little hair away, but we're talking about a St. Jude patient here. If he got a few more people to tune in, he probably would reach that goal, but he only sold 100,000. Now, I'm not the next Jordan Belfort, and I'm not uncircumcised, but with easy calculations, Austin was planning on selling at least over 300 million dollars worth of subscriptions. But in reality, he was mere pennies off, you know, really just close to getting the golden apple. He only sold 12 million. Yeah, I'm 100% sure his financial advisor hung himself in the office that day. And Austin promised to pay everybody for competing in the event, and after it was over, he must have been offering sexual favors, because he decided to lend out a whopping zero dollars to all the fighters. At that point, you might as well donate empty water bottles to Africa and eat food in front of a homeless shelter. That's right, Austin must have got rocked so hard he thought the whole event was a fucking fever dream. Because, you know, he kept on posting videos like, everything is just giddy and fat titties forcing his kids to be happy while flexing in front of a bunch of third graders by dropping her off at an elementary school in a Lambo. You got that? Put your seatbelt on. Actually, matter of fact, for your backpack, I have a trunk. You're, you're a fucking idiot. But that's not the only time he tortured his children without them wanting to. I mean, that's the whole premises of their channel. We'll never forget the one time he made her daughter lick a dick lollipop. You love what? You love lollipop? Oh, God. <laughs> you don't need that. Come here. Show Catherine what you have in your hand. Show Catherine. Show her. <laughs> she said it's a lollipop. <laughs> <coughs> nigga, you gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. Just to remind their kids of what the true money maker in the family is. That little twiddly dink of porn honey is what's really racking in the money here. You kids should be thankful you're fucking alive. But honestly, just a real clean way to say you're an insufferable asshole and became so desperate for attention to the point where you try to impress a bunch of fucking eight-year-olds that pick their nose and drool at it because they don't know the name of the car, let alone how to count to fucking ten. But it's okay, Austin fits right in because he didn't know how to count jack shit besides his own spermy bust into Catherine's clit to make another fucking kid because he can't count apparently. He hasn't even dropped a single penny out of his ass to the fighters of the tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if he just went around like screwed and started finessing gold doubloons out of people's caskets. Like, I'm sure at this point he's hitting licks on homeless people and stealing their change bucket. I wouldn't be surprised if he went to a church and stole the magical cereal bowl that they hand out or whatever the fuck you put money into. Probably got his own listing on Fiverr where you pay him to see how you can abuse their children the way he can. That or a Fortnite coach, I mean, one of the two, you know. Or he could perpetually run a hot dog stand. I mean, they're pretty inexpensive to buy and purchase. And, you know, I mean, if you can go to the right place, like in New York, you can definitely sell a little bit of Frank and Furthers and go even further than you ever thought. Yeah, awesome, you're fucked. There ain't no coming back.
back from this. You might as well grab your hobo stick and pack away your dick, because you're not having another kid in these conditions. Grab a garden hoe, Catherine's camel toe, and head your ass down to the skid rope. And pull a Nikado avocado and start doing a mukbang in the soup kitchen. Like, you're absolutely done for. Your family's gonna be wearing the same clothes for the next six months. You're gonna be out here walking the streets looking like an Atlanta transvestite prostitute, because all you're gonna be wearing is Catherine's BDSM suit and her fucking Victoria's Secret thongs, because all your other clothes are in the dry cleaners. And your kids are just gonna be galloping around like a bunch of retarded horses in a Dr. Seuss book, because you have to wear two times XL shirts and pants because you have no other clothes for them to wear. They're gonna be walking around like they're on a Met Gala runway if it was hosted in the back of a KFC bathroom. I know you're a narcissistic, insufferable piece of shit, but you could have at least once thought for your children in the circumstance that they're put in under your room, under your orders, under your house that you probably fucking locked them in the basement with. But no, you're so self-entitled that you wanted to host a whole ass boxing event and promise a bunch of people and probably gave them over-the-counter hand jobs that you would give them money back when they got done fighting just for you not even to fucking chime in a dime back to them. Now, obviously, the fighters were completely confused on what the fuck was going on. They were turning left, right, looking for answers. They couldn't find them. You would have a better chance of contacting a CIA agent on holiday break than contacting Austin because he just went absolutely ghost mode, never to be seen again. Except his weekly Monday, Wednesday, Friday, family-friendly uploads that he would post acting like nothing was going on whatsoever. Let's go. Our kids react to me and Catherine's divorce papers. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pipe a bitch with asthma real quick. Obviously, over time, this caused outrage over the people that actually put money into it, and it did with the main investor, allegedly for the first time ever playing defense. James Harden sued Austin for almost $2 million alone, which I'm sure Austin had a little shiggle and a giggle about because it's only a small dent for him, with him roughly losing almost all of his net income, excluding the additional $98 million just from that one lawsuit alone. But don't worry, just like Allstate, we only jerk off with the right hands. Catherine will soup in for the rescue. Oh, she's being sued too. Oh, she also has a net worth of $2 million million dollars. Oh, she she also might be leaving you. Well, looks like you had a little hooter with the cooter one too many times, but I would never fear Austin. I'm sure you guys will rekindle your love and a bark anew a bass when you're clapping her ass in the back of the soup kitchen to have your 14th fucking child. Diamonds on my wrist, they all frost. Shooters on my side, yeah, they all go. Bitch, you know I'm never lagging, bitch, I keep my pop. You know what the Bible says, you can't make a good pair without legal affairs, and that's why Catherine is perfect for Austin. Cause they're both like stage clowns for a kid's birthday party if the kid walked up and socked them both in the fucking nut sack. Even though basketball players are literally suing the family, she's developing her own little March Madness bracket of lawsuits that she has predict which one she's gonna pay first. Short answer, absolutely none of them, because her wallet is being stretched more than Ben Shapiro's asshole if he was in Atlanta. But honestly, you gotta admire Catherine's business approach here. I've never seen anybody set up a business just to wipe their white rich ass with it and basically set it up to fail from the get-go, fucking over every employee along down with it. The way she was running her business, I thought she was going to add a sequel to the Industrial Revolution because she didn't run it at all. Matter of fact, she practically acted like she didn't even know she fucking owned it. I wouldn't be surprised if she called in the company and asked when their holiday discounts dropped. Hey, I was wondering when your guys' Crystal Christmas discount was. Oh, unfortunately, we're no longer continuing that because you made us file for bankruptcy last week. And here, since Christmas is right around the corner, I hope you get pegged by Santa Claus with a candy cane so hard you'll be singing your own Christmas carol. Happy holidays to you, the little fucking elves you raise in St. Dick sweatshop, you stupid bitch. So Catherine released her own skincare brand almost a year ago, which I was quite surprised by because the only product I could see myself ever getting after watching an Ace Family video is a bucket of spermicide. But I can't even give her credit when you guys think credit is due because she pretty much put almost no effort into her own business because she just stole another brand copied his homework and changed one thing to act like she made it on her own and actually even looking at the screenshot right now of the tbl linkedin you guys can see there's her body listed in their banner we actually talked about how Catherine took a brand called her body removed the cbd out of it and now you have 1212 gateway she could have at least sprinkled in some snow salt and marinate a wet garbage bag into a bathtub of her children's tears and add a little lamb blood or at least do something to actually innovate and create her own product but just like her uterus activity she decided to hit copy and paste on somebody else's business and remove the the one ingredient that actually helps your skin a lot. Now, I don't need Benjamin Buttons live on the scene to tell you how that went because obviously it went ass backwards fucking horrible. I'm surprised her lotion didn't have bleach and ammonia in it so when people started using it, they walk out the bathroom looking like a LGBTQ plus Freddy Krueger. Honestly, a wonderful product. 10 out of 10. Would highly recommend. I've always been wanting this skincare routine that makes me look like I just got operated on by Leatherface and Catherine McBroom made that possible. So the brand is called 1212 Gateway and Catherine owns around 65% of it. And I don't know who in the fuck in their right mind agreed to let her represent their company. She probably recruited a couple meth head she found sleeping in the dumpster behind a Detroit alleyway to create the skin brand. She probably doesn't even have a standardized drug test. Her policy is that you have to be on three hardcore drugs to even have a position to be on this office. You gotta be ripping six lines off the machines while you're fucking making this lotion. But the employees of the original manufacturer of the product called TBO were claiming that Catherine was just trying to like pull a Mao Zedong and take over the whole entire business through brute force. They had almost everything planned out. They just needed a marketing strategy, something to get their voices heard. And who would be the best person to ever do that than Catherine McBroom herself? Which is a terrible idea from the jump. I don't 
don't know if all the board members were overdosing off of Perk 30 when they were trying to pick their sponsor. It's almost like having Jared Fogle be the host of Blue's Clues where he just starts teaching sex education on Nick Jr. I don't know what kind of marketing strategy TBL is going with there because everybody that watches the Ace family just wants to see the kids being forced to be happy. Nobody gives a flying clit shit about Catherine except the 12 year old boys that probably beat off to her when she's shown in videos. But don't worry, Catherine made sure that their voices were heard. She wanted the whole world to know that she was about to drop the shittiest lotion to ever exist and she did a damn well good job of it by shouting it out in two videos out of the thousands that she posted. Matter of fact, she was so passionate about the product, she actually overrided all the social media accounts that TBL gave her no access to and changed all the passwords and info to really ensure the company that she was going to handle this by herself. They're pretty much claiming that she has been trying to kick them out of the business when she's in fact been the problem from the start. They claim that Catherine McBroom has actually stolen the websites and information from the brand so they can't properly run social media pages or websites or make sales or anything. She was going to get this product out to everybody in the goddamn world. Churches would start baptizing their kids in a bottle of 1212. Soldiers of the army would get a bottle of this delectable lotion instead of food rations. All porn stars would start sponsoring this lotion. Hey daddy, you want to get your dick red in bed? Well head on over to gateway.org. Want your cock to look like a Gouda cheese block? Well never fear, you don't have to worry about that because our product is never in stock. Call within the next 10 minutes we'll start cussing your family out over the phone. I mean this bitch makes Valkyrie look like she can be a good president for a and that's coming from the same woman that tried to tell us that computer screens are affecting our skin. <laughs> But I'm going to do one thing the Ace family never done before, which is actually keep it inside the sack and give you guys a little nutshell of what happened. So TBL announced that their first year for sales was actually pretty decent. They sold a lot more than they were expecting, but they could have sold a whole 10 times fold extra if Catherine didn't cock block the whole entire business and log them out of all their social media. They acknowledge that 1212 Gateway has sold pretty well, but they also say that they would have done so much better if Catherine wasn't in their way. Which they spent weeks and rentless hours butt chugging espresso to keep their eyelids open, just desperately trying to log back in, but they did it to no avail. Tracing the footsteps of the Zodiac Killer was easier than trying to get in contact with Catherine. She was also so confident and courageous that her product was knocking the shit off the shelves because 1212 in her mind works better than chemotherapy. This is the best thing since the invention of sloppy head and sliced bread. You'll be able to swat a fly with your bare hands, but this motherfucker. It was selling in flying colors. Even Stevie Wonder was taking his glasses off to take a look at this fucking rainbow. Sisters were throwing fists. Brothers were fucking mothers up in the Bath and Body Works just trying to get their hands on a bottle of lotion. That Catherine thought it was unnecessary to show up to any of the board meetings where they were reporting on how their business was failing and when requested she just did what any natural owner would do which is just pull a dick in the back of the captain quarters and ignore her whole staff because in her mind silence makes the most noise. What is supposed to do to do interviews and promote the brand and things like that and she's just not following through with it. It's not sales are going through the roof the fuck you need to be here for actually you know what I'll settle it two week vacation for everybody I'll even send strippers to everyone's homes who gives a fuck if you're married or straight I'll deploy a big hub of fat dick rick to your front door. Uh, boss the graph is upside down I had to sell my car just to keep working here. What? You're all fucking fired. Get the fuck out of my face. You better leave before I slap you and your mother for raising such a bitch. I feel like Betty White's cooch sounds like styrofoam when she walking. She'd be squeaking around like SpongeBob boots every time she sits down. So obviously when there's a problem in sales and when your business is on the brink of collapsing, the next best thing to do is act like you're on jury duty for a murder trial and just go absolute MIA like you're on witness protection because that's probably the only protection that Catherine is familiar with, except she was here the whole time. She was at the party and the life of it. She was top roping off the tables making the most noise. Well, at least on the one place that every narcissistic asshole goes to to suck their own titties and preach about how much of a good person they are, which is Twitter. Is it Thanksgiving? No. It's Veterans Day? Well, who gives a fuck? You all better be thankful for me. Those soldiers didn't do shit. 1212 Gateway is the only way to find true peace. I'm the most laid back, chill, drama free, overly calculated person you'll ever meet. And if you don't like it, then you can cup your cheeks and head on over to the fucking mountain peaks, you stupid bitch. From the grace of God and all the seven angels above, you can fuck me sideways on a balance beam. It's honestly such a wholesome tweet. It's almost like seeing Adams and Eve sponsor an episode of Ryan's Tour Review. Identify Just so genuine and pure, I was crying so hard that I almost ejaculated after seeing this tweet. It's so empowering. Even Malcolm X is having a little giggle and a shiggle, pumping his fists up in the air, cheering Catherine on. I was on the toilet when I read this tweet, and it was so positive that even my asshole smiled. And obviously, besides all the fans that were cherishing this tweet like she just ripped one of the lines out of Socrates' great books of philosophies, there were people that were calling her statement a honky hunk of bullshit, which rightfully so, because it was. But Catherine, being the relaxed, drama-free person that she is, immediately decided to do a full 180 and go absolute battle rat tat ape shit and started throwing tantrums to the third graders in reply, she was probably one plastic joke away from threatening to throw an IED through a 12 year old's doggy door. The next person that replies will get publicly hanged on Hollywood Boulevard. Mmm, your whack ass is in the way. Mind your own business, you're tweeting my pick is the most attention you ever had in life. Yeah, Catherine, how sweet. You really know how to keep the peace with your own two hands here. You know, it's real rich coming from Rockefeller over here that she told somebody to mind their business when she can't even pay attention to her fucking own. Perhaps the company has a singing policy where they visit her office when she's in there three times every year and they have to start singing to her to get her turn around like they're on the fucking voice 
have her attention. And speaking of attention in life, you literally built your whole entire premises of your career after getting a new leak up Coochie Creek once every nine months. If you didn't have children, which is what 90% of your audience watches you for, you would be absolutely nothing. You literally fabricate your life on social media and fake your family's happiness so you can have a bunch of shit streak alcoholic 40 year old single fathers that are in debt to paying child support. Just sit there aggressively smacking his lips and jig jacking his hips. Is he hitting the billy bounce? No, it's just causing effect because he couldn't pause when he was erect. Because he listened to one NBA young boy album and decided to take after his pullout game, so now you ruined his chances of going to the NBA and he has to look over a fucking young boy. For all the men and semen demons out there, please put a silencer on your cock 22 unless you want to load a whole clip into a bitch's burger lips. Trust me, that little crease doesn't need an extra dose of your guppy grease. Every child deserves a parent, but not every parent deserves a child. Don't be silly. Always wrap your willy. Oh, fuck my chair, bro. But you know what better not break? Those fucking hymens. Wear a goddamn Trojan, you fucking whore horse. I know you've seen a lot of Austin's womb broom, but please try putting it in your mouth so you can shut up and listen to yourself for once. Oh, officer, I didn't assault this girl. I was just simply masturbating with her vagina, you see. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Same with you saying you're drama-free and don't like attention. So to really drop my draws and flick my balls, Catherine McBroom got sued for over $30 million by the TBL company. And that pretty much wraps up the big condom ad that we call the Ace Family Channel. They lived a nice paradise life full of thrills in the Beverly Hills, and now they have to sleep on a dirt road next to a field of fucking daffodils. This is where I wish it would end because the big Wall Street bank rollers that are known as the Ace Family thought it would be a perfect idea after getting sued for over $100 million to buy a $10 million mansion. But the Ace Family can't go a day in their life without showing off their six car garage and $10 million mansion or their wireless Bluetooth fireplace or the six butlers that work there that they don't even pay minimum wage combined for and any other rich economies that you can think of that are absolutely useless and nobody fucking wants in life. I mean, what kind of peasants would the Ace Family look like if they didn't do a daily reminder on how their bedroom is $30,000 because they used a bed frame made out of fucking beaks out of a dodo bird that they revived through old DNA? and then slaughtered it instantly to make the bed frame. I mean, you might as well show me your dick because this has to be some sort of sick joke that you're fucking playing on me. You think the Ace family would vlog around a house that's under $500,000? They might as well do a tent tour to heroin camp at that point. If they ever got the chance to, they would probably revive Benjamin Franklin from the grave so he can peg us up the ass to really get what 100 feels like. But this isn't exactly their first rodeo moving into a home. They practically home hop almost every other week. It's almost like if Jeff Bezos became a fucking gypsy. I wouldn't be surprised if Austin made his kids marry each other for the culture. But usually when they do it, they don't have a $100 million lawsuit. So it let a lot of people into speculation into one how they bought the house, which they proclaimed to do multiple times. I've always wanted my own home, and I've never had one. Catherine's never had one. And the fact that we're able to have one. Oh this God. has been a dream of mine to have my own house tour. If you would have asked me where I'd be at the age of 25, I definitely wouldn't have said I would be standing on the roof of my own house. But in reality, they just went to a bunch of different loan companies and got on their hands and knees and also wrote their name and their child's blood just for one of them to reluctantly agree out of fear. I'm sure Austin going to the loan office probably resembled Dr. Strange trying to bargain with their mamu. LA Homes and Loans, I've come to bargain. Sir, we told you no eight fucking times. Spider-Man, no way home. Or something. I don't know. I didn't really watch them. Ace family, no home. But after multiple hours of standing outside the front door screaming and also requesting an unreasonable amount of hand jobs, after a quick nut and a little moan, they finally gave Austin a $10 million loan. But they didn't get your typical run-of-the-mill loan that you would use for a home. They actually use a hard money loan, which is really expensive. And not only that, they also have a high-ass interest rate, usually way over 10%. But I don't feel like explaining it, so I'm gonna let Connie Springer from Attack on Titan give you the rundown about real estate and how it somehow fucked up the Ace family even more than they already were at. Hard money loans are expensive loans used by house flippers that almost always have a one-year payback term. They're considered expensive because the borrower typically pays multiple points at closing and an interest rate of 10 to 12 percent. So not only do they owe 9.5 million dollars, they also have an interest rate of over 12 percent, which means that they would have to pay almost 110 thousand dollars a month just to live in that home. And obviously when you already owe over 100 million dollars in lawsuits, it's not going to fucking end well. I mean, it's what the Ace family does. They buy big ass houses that they absolutely don't need, but then they constantly just brag about how humble and down to earth they are. And they respectfully show us by doing five videos on a new mansion tour that they just bought to really give us a view on how modest they are. And they want to show all the third graders at home that are wearing balloons caps and rainbow suspenders that they can do what they do. All they got to do is just wait till ninth grade and start having unprotected sex. So the time they graduate, they'll have six fucking children. The dream begins with the semen cream. All you got to do is just shoot your little high fructose porn syrup into a bitch's flapjacks. And next thing you know, you're living out in a Beverly Hills mansion or live in one of the projects that are set in Detroit because you thought it'd be a great idea that after you watch an Ace Family video that you want to have seven kids by the time you're 17. So you go out and find a random prostitute on the side of a fucking Hooters bar, shoot a little tutor into a bitch's cooter. And next thing you know, your second day is going to be at a courthouse. And what I find even more incredible about this whole situation is that the house wasn't even anywhere near worth $10 million. It was actually two separate properties that have the ugliest scenery I think I've ever fucking seen. I mean, the shit looks like an unknown shitty location that you'd find in Bergen Ants that would give you common loot. It's honestly like the ugliest mansion I've ever seen, or at least a twin set of them. And Austin thought it would be a perfect idea to mangle that shit together and pretty much make a long ass hallway to connect the two mansions, which would cost over $4 million just to have one secret hallway because you know you can't.
can't walk outside and step 10 feet into the next fucking house. What are those, like, peasants? They would have to ride on a horse and chariot to get to the other side of the damn home, even though it's about three yards away. Oh, and here's really something that'll get your mind working and your uncle twerking. They're also being sued by their past landlord out of the house that they just moved out of, which they also didn't buy. They also leased that one, too. They never bought a home in a day in their fucking life, even though they lied about it about 50 times in their videos. But they basically failed to pay rent and also broke their contract early, which pissed the landlord off. He stormed up to the front door and shoved his dick through the doorbell that had a little note attached to it, which is a $65,000 lawsuit. And also gave them a complimentary pipe bomb in their mailbox as well. So, I mean, I don't know if the Ace family thinks that if they lease a home, they automatically just own it forever, like they're playing fucking Monopoly. So it's more people chasing after the Ace family than a fucking Tesseract. They obviously had to foreclose their home eventually because they owed so much money to other people and failed to also pay the rent that they had in their own home that they just bought because they also spent another $4 million to connect one fucking hallway together. And obviously, once you wreck it, Ralph, your own home and destroy a bunch of shit and add something new to it, it brings the property value down. So now the house is being listed for way less than what they bought it for, which is about around $2 million. And of course, the Ace family always has to pretend everything is positive in their life. So when asked about their foreclosure, they just pretty much lied and said that nothing was going on with the house whatsoever. Hey, Catherine, there's a lot of rumors that uh, your house is getting foreclosed. What do you have to say about that? It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> Shut your bitch ass the fuck up! But I mean, these people are like John McGaffrey. They just randomly find a million dollar condo like out of fucking nowhere every two weeks. So I'm sure it won't be long until they find a new house. They might already have one up by the time I make this video up. And a lesson to learn from this video is to make sure you always wrap up as well. Don't be silly. Always wrap your damn willy or you'll end up like these people that owe millions of dollars in debt. You think their life is a paradise, but truly the people that try to constantly insinuate that their life is good is usually the people that are suffering the most. Also, if you have a promise, make sure you fucking keep it. Don't be that guy that constantly bets money and never pays people back, especially when it's over units of millions of dollars. And for any parent that's watching this out here, unless you abuse your child, don't make a family channel. And when they don't script videos, it's so fucking awkward to watch. It's almost like they just forget that they were a family the whole time they're meeting each other for the first time. More awkward than hiccuping during an orgasm. Oh baby, I'm about <laughs> But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to slap a like on this video for your dad slaps you. Subscribe to hit my vibe. Follow all my socials, especially my Instagram. Links down below. There's some wholesome family fun on my channel. I'll light my brother on fire for one of the pictures. So make sure you go follow me on there. And for all the virgins out there that don't have a thin lining chance of even having a family channel to begin with, then fear no more. You guys can join my Discord server. It's a gangster party. Bring a dick. Oh, Wait. you're disgusting. Why Ew! You, wait, your cat be eating saws? And Yucky! Some clash kissers and mass pissers there. Show some digi dig, get some pixel pussy, whatever you desire. You guys know that I own the Discord, so I'm obviously the biggest virgin myself. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Alright, bro, I'm gonna have this bitch. Hey! I feel like an OnlyFans girl getting pregnant is like the equivalent of an athlete tearing his ACL. Wait, so how the fuck is Catherine playing in this season? I think I'm in love with her and it shows. She said she'll give me anything I want. I'll do anything for her. She knows oh, my bro, we gon' slide with that ball I think I'm in love with her and it shows You ain't been spending no time with me I got her rest and I find a thing